Today, I wanna to talk to you a bit about starting to teach art classes yourself. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. If you're working to make a full-time living as an artist, I think that teaching is such a good thing to get involved with, to have a bit more of a stable income, because there will be times where you're not selling as many paintings as you would like to, and that can make it difficult. You can teach classes that only take you a couple hours, once or twice a week, and have a much, much more stable income because of that. Now, a lot of people will say, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm not ready to start teaching, just to give you an idea. Now, yes, I have drawn my entire life, but I didn't decide to become a professional artist and start taking this serious until I was 19. When I was 21, I started teaching classes. That's only, what, three years of practice before I was like, okay, I'm ready to jump into this. I didn't jump into teaching adults. I jumped into teaching preteens and kids. This was such a great way for me to start, and it was really good for myself. I learned so much from teaching, because making mistakes is a really good way to learn. Having to mistakes, knowing what not to do, what to do differently next time. And when you're teaching students, you are constantly fixing their mistakes, which means you're learning that much faster anyway. So a little added bonus to actually getting paid. But teaching kids, I think, is a great way to start with teaching. And you have many stores, if you're in the U.S., stores like Hobby Lobby have a classroom where if you go and talk to their manager, tell them that you're interested in teaching classes, show them samples of what you want to teach, they can get you set up on their schedule. And there are very, very many ways to structure a class. And I think one of the things that causes a lot of people to think, I'm not ready to teach yet, I'm not quite there yet, is that they don't know how to set up the class. You don't need to build this full curriculum. All you have to do is show up, have some samples for people to draw from, and help them to complete their own piece. What I did is I had bags full of reference materials, or they could bring their own from home, and they chose their, their medium. When I first started teaching, I only taught acrylics, but over time I started teaching graphite, oil paint, I mean every medium that I work in I started teaching. But I kept it easy to start with, I just taught acrylic painting. and students would bring in something they wanted to paint or they chose from my collection and I just walked them through step by step how to complete that. I didn't have to have a lesson plan. I didn't have to do all of this work. It wasn't really a workshop that needed a lot of planning. Now workshops are another way that you can go. Those do require a lot more planning. There are a lot more work um, in getting started and then you're going to be teaching generally adults. But just to get started, just to get your feet wet with the whole teaching thing, Go to a Hobby Lobby class or a local art store. Go to your community center and see if you can start teaching classes there. And starting with kids classes, which happen to be very popular anyway, people are always looking for classes for their kids. This is just such a good way to get started. A few things you want to consider when deciding how to set up your classes. One way is to have everyone paint the same thing. A lot of people think that this will be easier, and it is easier for some teachers. Everybody works on the same project. The problem that I ran into with this is that if somebody missed a class, they fell behind. Trying to get people caught up was a lot more work. The next problem was some students would have been with me for longer and they knew what the next steps were going to be. They were much faster painters. You have some students who are very, very slow. Not that they won't be good, they just work very slow. And so you have this person who's eight steps ahead, this one who's behind, and everyone's all over the place. And it ends up getting a little bit hectic with that. You have the people who are slower start getting frustrated. They think they're not good enough. The people who are fast are getting bored. I definitely saw that as being a bit of an issue. So for me personally, I really enjoyed teaching where everyone was working on their own project. If they missed a week, they didn't fall behind. It didn't matter how fast someone painted. No one felt pressure. So that's just how I structured mine. But you can go either way. So just to give you an idea of how I set up my class, students had to purchase their own art supplies. I did not provide that. I didn't have kits. You can put together kits, but that's that much more work for you. Students would just purchase them from the store. And most stores like Hobby Lobby, that's really all they ask. I didn't have to pay Hobby Lobby to teach there. I just had to show people the supplies that they carried at the store. You want to make sure you've got a supply list and have that supply list available at that store that you're teaching at and on your website. I brought with me each week a light box, a hair dryer, and reference photos. The students brought all of their other supplies. I charged $20 per student per two hour session. And I think this part's important. Even if I only had one student signed up for class, I still showed up. And I've known of teachers. I used to run the, the class at Michael's years ago. Teachers would say, I want a minimum of three students before I show up to teach a class. That ends up being a problem, and those classes didn't grow very fast because someone would sign up, be all excited, they took, put it aside, you know, Friday night I'm going to this class, and then they get a call from the teacher, oh, not enough people signed up, we're not having it. And this goes on so much that that first person is like, you know what, forget this, I'll find a different class somewhere else. My rule was always, no matter how many people signed up, I was showing up for it. I did have a limit though. My limit was 10 or 11. Sometimes I could push 11 if it was a lot of return students. It, when you're first starting, I would say start with five or six students and then add on to that. 
that as you get more used to it. And as students get used to your way of teaching, it was really easy for me to see a student from across the room say, okay, what do I do next? I could look at their work and go, okay, I need you to glaze this color over that, and then you're gonna blend this up to that, and I don't even have to touch their work. They know what those terms mean. A new student wouldn't know what that means. So balancing how many students you allow in a class sometimes has to do with how experienced some of your other students are and how much attention that they're going to require. New students require tons of attention to get started. The first class, the worst, because you're having to show them how to set up their palette, how to hold the pencil, how to hold everything, how to clean up. The first class for a lot of new students can be very hectic. I tried to limit no more than one or two new students per class so that my regular students did not feel neglected. You don't want to set up too many different times on too many days. I knew a lot of teachers who would get excited and they thought they would have all of these people signing up because wow, $20 per student. If I can get five or six or seven students per class, that's so much money it's going to add up. So I'm going to have eight classes a week So because that's how much money I want to make. The problem is what happens is you, you just spread out the same amount of students. You may only have five people sign up and they're all spread out to different classes. You're making way less per hour than you thought you were going to make. Start with one or two classes maybe a daytime class and a nighttime class and that's it when those classes get full even if people call going oh I really want to take a Wednesday class can you offer one of those these are my these are my times this is what I have available when these times are full I will add additional classes but if you add too many too soon you're just spreading yourself thinner and you're not making as much as you could if you just condensed everybody into one time if someone really wants to make a class they're gonna make that happen even if the time isn't the most convenient for them so I think trying to cater to everybody too much can make your life a lot more difficult you can post about your classes on your local Craigslist and of course on your website make sure you're advertising there so it hopefully will come up through Google searches and use keywords like what city you're in put the map location have all of that information there so that you do come up on the searches if you decide that you want to teach adults make sure that you put an age limit on your class for me that was 12 I found that if you have a lot of eight-year-olds I mean I figured everyone's working on a different project so it didn't matter if I mixed children and adults in the same class adults don't like that adults don't want to feel like they're babysitting and kids are being noisy and I mean the kids are having fun so you don't want to discourage that but I don't think that they mix as well so I had a minimum age limit of 12 on my classes when I used to allow children I lost a lot of the adult students for that reason they, they felt like they couldn't say certain words they were having to watch their language what was appropriate around the kids they didn't want to go hang out with kids they wanted to go hang out with other adults who were artists so definitely keep in mind whether or not you should have an age limit on your classes and the possibility of how you set up or structure your class is pretty endless my point here is I don't want you to feel like I need to spend a year coming up with a curriculum and I have to have all of these these modules set up and I have to have have this done and that done because I took a workshop and this is how they did it you don't have to do all of that you can keep it so simple and still have very happy students who are learning a lot from you and for those of you who are again thinking oh I'm just not ready I don't know how to teach I didn't I didn't have any clue how to teach. I started, and that's why I started teaching kids, because they're not as critical of whether or not you're good at teaching yet. But it all that also helped me to learn how to word things in a way that people would understand, because I was so used to explaining to kids how to do different things. And you don't have to do this full time. You can teach one class once a week. If you're charging $20 per student, you can easily make one to $200 in that two hours. That is a nice padding in addition to selling your own artwork. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing you original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and keep up with whatever live streams are coming up.